This past weekend, Sterling Shepard suffered one of the most unusual knee injuries I've ever seen, tearing his ACL while seemingly just running in a straight line. Welcome back everybody, I'm Dr. Brian Suter, and if you're new here and you enjoy learning about injury mechanisms and sort of the underlying anatomy and treatments, then be sure and subscribe to this channel for future updates whenever injuries occur. This was the play where Shepard injured his left knee. Now keep in mind, this is the same side that he suffered his Achilles injury on, which could certainly have some implications here that we'll address later on. But it's the left knee here, and he's basically just slowing down. He's just slowing down from his route. He's moving in a straight line, and it looks like it's sort of this step right there where ultimately his ACL tore in that left knee. We can see a little bit here as his foot kind of comes through. A lot of people talked about how it looked like his left foot or his left cleat got stuck in the field. And I think they're saying that because you can see a little bit of kind of turf kind of being kicked up right here behind him. But that was actually the right foot that drug on the ground kicking that turf up. So I don't know if you can really conclusively say that his left foot got caught in the turf, so to speak, because nothing on the video clearly shows that. But how in the world does something like this happen, right? Because we're used to seeing these non-contact ACL tears where somebody is accelerating. They're trying to pivot. They're trying to cut, change directions. I don't know if we've ever seen one where somebody is running in a straight line and just slowing down. One thing that we don't see from the replay footage is the view in what we call the frontal plane. So straight on at Shepard, because what we might see if we looked in that view is a little bit of movement of the knee coming inward or potentially how his trunk might have been tilted to one side or the other, because those are typically factors we see with what leads to an ACL tear. And just simply from this sort of oblique view on the side, we can't really see or judge anything about what his knee is doing if it's coming inward in this direction or not. It probably does have some movement in that direction because that's often what leads to in part when the ACL tears, but we can't see that to explain things here. With our biodigital anatomy tool, remember that the ACL sits deep inside the knee and it runs from the backside of the femur or the thigh bone to the front of the tibia or the shin bone. So what it's doing is it's preventing the tibia or the shin bone from shifting forward or anterior relative to that thigh bone. It also runs from the outside of the femur to the inside of the tibia. So there's also a rotational component that the ACL is working to prevent. What this means is that usually if there's any internal rotation of the tibia relative to the thigh bone, that's also going to put some tension on the ACL, stressing it and lead to in part that injury mechanism. So that's typically what we're looking for. We're looking for a little bit of that internal rotation of the tibia relative to the femur, which we often see from that knee valgus where the knee comes inward. Sometimes we'll actually see the tibia shifting forward because the ACL has been torn, so there's no more stabilizer. And we oftentimes see other things up at the trunk too. If we really scrutinize the play here, it does seem like whenever he steps that position right here, that his tibia is maybe shifted a little bit forward. It just looks like it's a little bit off. It looks a little bit anterior and Maybe that's the benefit of hindsight here, knowing what happened, but it does seem like we are observing some of that anterior shift in the tibia. Now, whenever that ACL tears, because really at this point, it's likely torn, his body is going to compensate and sort of shift a little bit unexpectedly. And that's what causes, I think, his right foot here to drag on the field. I don't think this was intentional. I don't think he's typically doing this. I think that dragging of the right foot is because his ACL is torn, his left knee is now unstable, and because it's unstable when he plants, his weight gets shifted unexpectedly to that right side, causing him to drag his right toe. You know, maybe a little bit in this position, the foot might be pointed outward a little bit, so a little bit of slight external rotation. What this can sometimes do is maybe put some pronation on the foot, which is going to cause that tibia to rotate internally. So there's a little bit of things we can gain here from the video, but it certainly is not some clear and obvious, yep, boom, torn ACL obvious to explain how it happened. There are some injuries that I think are truly flukes, like when somebody gets stepped on or they reach funny and a bone breaks, there's some things that no matter what you do, you can't control. But something like a ligament tearing on a non-contact mechanism like this, I often still think there are some factors at play that explain or at least contribute to why this occurred. The ACL is a passive stabilizer, meaning it can't move, it's not really active, but your muscles around the knee are active stabilizers. So they're just as important in stabilizing the knee and really helping to support the function of the ACL. Specifically with the ACL, it's the hamstrings that really are actively supporting that ligament. And so if an athlete has really impaired hamstring function, maybe they have poor balance between the hamstring strength in the back of the knee and the quad strength in the front, you can sort of predispose the knee to different conditions where if you step right or the environment is right, more likely to injure that ACL. It's not saying that one directly causes the other, but 
it's part of those intrinsic risk factors that could influence what ultimately happens within the ligament. So for somebody like Shepard, who's coming off of rehab for a pretty major injury like his Achilles, it certainly is possible that there might have been some imbalance in the muscles up around the knee that would have made a step like this more likely to cause an ACL injury than it otherwise might have. And there are also anatomic factors just within the shape of the bones. So we have something called tibial slope. And if you look at just the top of the tibia here, this is the tibial plateau. And depending on how that tibial plateau is angled, you can be more predisposed to an ACL tear because if it's severely sloped, that's gonna make the femur, the thigh bone, wanna slide forward even more. So there are different anatomical things such as like the notch where the ACL inserts that are intrinsic to the patient. It's inside the knee, things we can't see that set you up to be more likely to have an ACL tear. So when I see something like this mechanism where honestly, really don't see anything clear like a push off, a cut, a change direction, a pivot, a contact, it makes me think of some of those other risk factors like something about the anatomy of the bones, something about the muscle balance in the leg. I know a lot of people are gonna ask about the turf and I think the turf is being blamed as sort of part of this injury. I don't think you really can demonstrate any clear evidence that that's the case. Like I said, there's nothing clear that his foot gets caught in the turf and sort of twists or gets stuck. Oftentimes with the field surface, what we're worried about with it causing injuries is how it affects the friction. So if there's more friction on the foot or on the leg and the foot is stuck, then whenever you apply a force to the knee, there's more torque through the knee because the foot is stuck in place as opposed to slipping and sliding. There's nothing here to really say unless, you know, maybe it's different cleats, a component of things, to really say 100% that the field is to blame for this injury. Again, the dragging that we see on the turf, that's not his left foot getting stuck. That's his right cleat dragging through because the ACL has already torn. People have made this move countless times before on this field and not had an ACL tear. So I really don't think you can look at this and say it's clearly the field's fault. Now the field might be one small component in an otherwise bigger picture, but definitely not something that I think we can 100% blame. In summary, yeah, it's a really unusual mechanism. I've never seen anything like it before. In hindsight, when we know what happened, we can sort of digest the footage a little bit and maybe think of some other risk factors that could be at play, but there is no doubt that everybody watching this who's shocked at how it happened, I honestly am as well. We also have to keep in mind it's possible that somebody had a previous ACL tear that might have just never been recognized because their body compensated. You may have had an injury or something where it was partially strained earlier in the game and now a less severe force that typically wouldn't tear it causes it to tear because it's been previously injured. So we always have to look outside of just that single moment and consider something else might have happened earlier in the game. You might have had a previous small partial tear that maybe we just didn't know about or he didn't even know about or the team didn't know. So there are some other unknown factors here that could also be playing a role that might explain what is otherwise a very confusing, very strange, very unusual circumstance that you're not alone in wondering how in the world could have happened. That's it for the video, everybody. I hope this was still educational. Like I said, I can't give you 100% on boom, this is exactly what occurred. All I can do is kind of talk you through some of the different factors that can contribute to ACL injuries and hopefully educate you about how they might have played a role in this situation. Let me know as always any questions or comments down below. And until next time, we'll see you later.